Hello. Hey. How are you? Hello. Look at you. I like your hat. Thank you. My Tarzette hat. <laughs> you look How super you? out. Thank you. I did a content day today, so I'm like nice. all dolled up. Nice. I did nothing today. <laughs> are you at the um, office right now? Yes. I love it. Um, so I don't know a whole lot. Of, like, is this going to time out or will it stay open? I think it times out at an hour. I okay. believe. I think that's okay. the max. Okay, cool. Yeah. So we just have to keep track of the time. Cool. Um, there's a lot of people joining in. Yeah. This is so exciting. It's this is my cool. second Instagram live. Uh, I've done it once before. So yeah, my second too. No, you are like such a pro at lives. I think going TikTok, on live. TikTok. Yeah. On Instagram, no, you kill it's it on TikTok. People. It's like people that know me. <laughs> this should be the same though. So we'll wait a second for people to come in. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Hi, everybody. I see some of Hello. my joining. Hi, guys. Hi, yeah. guys. If I do anything embarrassing, it wasn't me. <laughs> Did you cut your hair again? Yeah. <laughs> it looks good. It's shorter and shorter. It's going to be. I know. Episode. Every time I see you, it's like shorter. I know. But it looks really good. Thanks. And your hair is super long. I love I it. I know. It's like getting really like silky too. Nice. I've been taking care of it because Juhei yells at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's like a good amount of people in. There's yeah, fun. we got some people in here. Yeah. So I had such a good talk last week on live with Karen that I like felt compelled to do like another live conversation nice. um, on my Instagram. And like, since I like to um, post like business growth information and stuff like that, I thought it'd be interesting to have a conversation with you because you've experienced viral growth as well on social media. And I thought it would be like super interesting to like compare our stories and share a, a little bit about our journeys and like tips and stuff like that because I know a lot of people that are following us are you know on their own entrepreneurial journeys and stuff like that so I'm very excited yeah. to have you on my live thank you <laughs> so I want to start off with sharing some like backstory on each other um, so if you want to start you can kind of introduce yourself let us know like what your business is um, also let us know how long it took you to go viral on TikTok and uh, what piece of content made you go viral? I think that would be a good start. Okay, so I started, I never started out to go viral on TikTok. And I've never like hit like actual viral, like a million views, but I get, you know. No, you're almost views. at a million views. But... I looked just now, you're almost <laughs> at a million. Um, a so I just started, like my business is I do website conversion audits and I sell vintage sunglasses. So I got on TikTok just posting random stuff about business. And then I went in with no strategy, no plan. I was just like, you know what? I feel like doing this. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just, yeah, I just went in with like guns blazing. And I started talking about stuff that made sense to me, stuff that would have helped me when I was starting out with my business. And then mm -hmm. it kind of just took off from there. How long did it take you to like hit that like viral? My first like moment. I guess the first one was like my third video that I posted. And then oh, wow. it just kind of like kept going from there. Mm -hmm. What was so, that video about? Um, I think I was talking about like prioritizing something in your business. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. It was last November. So it was like, a, like a business tip video? Yeah, it was like 10 seconds long. I had like no hair, no makeup. I had like a mask dangling around my nose. <laughs> and then how often do you actually like create like videos? Like how often do you post? I post, I think, every other day. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah, I have I have so many questions for you because I want to grow my TikTok for Mantra um, because I, I have a really big following on Instagram, but then not mm -hmm. really on TikTok at all. And I feel like they are just two completely different um, platforms. So different. Like, completely different. Like, I've tried yeah. to, like, repurpose my content from Instagram to TikTok, and it doesn't work, like, at all. Yeah. And I'm still trying to figure, like, it all out, and I feel like I'm becoming, like, discouraged because I haven't seen any growth on there. So I feel like 
this would be really good so I can like ask you a bunch of questions and like pick your brain about everything and I have to pick your brain about Instagram because I fail at Instagram <laughs> no you kill it too no you're you, you already have like a big following on your personal whoa my my ex-boyfriend from high school just joined oh really <laughs> hi ex-boyfriend <laughs> what's up Raphael <laughs> um yeah so I I feel like our strategies were so different like you are like a big planner and like you got super mega viral on Instagram by like planning and consistency and like beautiful things and graphics mm -hmm. and I did the complete opposite like yeah for me, I'm just like shit posting and I'm just talking about whatever I feel like and I don't plan and yeah like, it's crazy that there's two different methods that can work because it all comes down to like the content mm-hmm for sure. Yeah. I mean, even when I started my page, the mantra co, like I didn't expect it to go viral and like be as big as it is. I mean, I always have imagined that and I intended for it to be a big platform and somewhere where people can go to for inspiration and help and things like that. But I never imagined that it would go viral in such a short amount of time. Um, so for anyone that's watching that is not familiar with my story, um, I started the mantra co with the Instagram page. Um, and I started off with just like inspirational quotes and like motivational mantras, things like that, things like, like that, like just graphics, like straight up graphics. But I did have um, like my own color palette that was set from the beginning. I had my own fonts that were picked out. So like that was planned ahead of time that kind of created like the brand imaging and things like that. Um, but it wasn't until I created a set of Zodiac graphics that totally went viral online. And like Kyla was with me when this all happened, like we were working together. Um, side note, I used to be a stylist and Kyla was a model. So that's kind of like how we met. Um, and since then, we just like grown um, into like our own businesses and things like that. So it's really cool that it all comes like full circle. Um, but yeah, so like my page went from 700 followers to 800,000 in less than a week on Instagram, which is like unheard of. It's like, it was crazy, like, the amount of, like, people that were, like, reposting and, like, commenting and following, it was, like, insane, but I definitely agree with you, I didn't really have the intention of going viral, but it just almost, like, happened to be, but looking back at it, I do see, like, the little things that we did that were intentional to get us to that point, and I feel like a lot of people um, are looking to, you know, grow their pages and grow their businesses so I hope that we can definitely help them in any way that we can through this I combo. hope so too you know it's something I learned on Instagram but is way more wildly important on TikTok is like content is king and then you know caption and quality and everything else is queen and mm -hmm. a lot of people don't understand that element of it so they're just posting like three or four or five or six times a day, even on TikTok. There's a lot of people that just post mm. nonstop because they're trying to experience massive growth, but they're not putting out things yeah. that are actually engaging or entertaining or like meaningful. And right. there's a lot of gurus on TikTok that say like, you just have to post many times a day. You just have to keep posting, keep posting, keep doing what you're doing. And yeah. my opinion on that is if you're doing something on TikTok that's not working, it's a different platform. We know people on there don't respond in the same way as other platforms. Mm -hmm. Then you probably shouldn't keep posting 10 of those a day you should probably True. look at the ones that you know are performing the best like so if you have one video that got 100 views and one that got two views then you go back mm -hmm. to that one that got 100 and you figure out what you did in there that's engaging and you get mm -hmm. you, you build on that and yeah. um yeah so like i just feel like tiktok is a completely different beast and there's a lot of bad information just mm -hmm. being pushed around because nobody is really sure how to grow on there yet everyone's just kind of like this is my opinion. yeah everyone's like testing it and like seeing right. like, what works and what doesn't yeah right. i feel like with mine too i've been just putting a bunch of different types of content out there just to see like what actually like hits you know yeah and but, then you go with the ones that there's a higher reaction to a higher right. response and build in that direction yeah um, what do you think about like the like the trending music like I know you don't use like music in your videos right at all I don't use music I don't use any of the tips I don't use any of the tricks I don't do any of mm -hmm. that at all because there's tips and there's tricks and there's things that might marginally help boost your engagement but it's all mm -hmm. hinges on whether the content is engaging in the first place mm -hmm. so if you post something like that's not really going to do that well and you add good music to it, it might boost you like one or two or 10 views, but it's not right. really the thing that projects you into being viral on TikTok. Right. It all comes down to 
the base of the, the content, content in the first place. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people that try to game the system with posting at certain times and all kinds of other things like that. But I believe that the TikTok algorithm isn't an algorithm at all. I think it's AI. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. I think that when you, it serves things to people as they get on the app rather than Instagram where it's like, okay, you got to post now because this is when your audience right. is on TikTok. It serves it to the person when they're on and when they're ready to see it because it knows what you want to see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It just, it's just so different. So yeah, different. Yeah, so different. And I also feel like with TikTok, you can kind of be more like authentic in a way, or more like unedited. You know, yeah, like, whereas sure. Instagram, you kind of have to have, like, the aesthetic and, like, a good photo and things like right. that, like, the angles or whatever. But TikTok, you can kind of just, like, go on, make a video real quick, and then just, like, post it. I almost feel like the uglier, the better on TikTok. <laughs> but do you think also that you have to kind of be, like, funny or, like, entertain? I mean, I think entertaining is, like, the number one thing I think on TikTok because people want to watch uh, me, that's, like, you know. Um, but I feel like for me, it's kind of hard to, like do that I don't know like I don't think? really think so because I think there's this one girl her name is it's like crypto with Alasia and she literally mm. half the time just is standing there and she uh -huh. has these little little things that she's pointing to and it's just crypto and I'm so involved and obsessed with her yeah. content she's not dancing oh. she's not talking yeah. she's not moving around she's just like mm, mm, mm. Huh. like like all her videos are like that serving her community like she's literally mm. just putting out content that serves her and the people that are following her and mm -hmm. she just hit 10,000 followers a couple days ago mm. and like I, I the it knows who is looking for your stuff and it serves it yeah. to who, who is looking for it as long yeah. as it's written in an engaging way it's styled in an engaging way mm. So you know how like on Instagram, a lot of people have like curated feeds and like they have like the color tones and everything like a vibe. Do you think that that is important in TikTok too? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I feel because like I did notice. Be... Yeah, I noticed on your page that you definitely have the same like style of, you know, talking and presenting your information on your videos. And then you also yeah. have the same like title on your cover photo. And mm -hmm. I feel like I wonder if that is like a thing, if that matters at all. It does, because with TikTok, the the reason you caption stuff and the reason you put a title like slide on your TikTok is because the AI, the software, the algorithm, it mm -hmm. takes all that into consideration mm -hmm. when it's serving the content. So if you're just speaking, it doesn't really pick that up. Whereas you type mm -hmm. in the words, it picks that up. So okay. if I'm talking about conversion audits, then it's going to get served to like my followers. But if I have that captioned in there too, and the title slide conversion mm -hmm. audit, stuff like that, mm -hmm. it picks up on that. And then it pushes it out to more people who are interested in conversion stuff. Okay. So can, captions serve like two purposes. Mm -hmm. Do you use like the different like uh, transitions and things like that within the TikTok, TikTok app? I don't. You don't? I just use, okay. I film little clips and I smush them together. Okay. So you film it on the app too. Yeah. I've tried, I was testing it out too, like uploading a video, like I already edited a video versus like um, filming it in the app. And I, I personally didn't see any difference, but I've read a bunch of articles that say that you're, that you should like film in the app. Right now, because it's so new, I know that they're saying, so I follow a TikTok, a guy that works at TikTok. And he mm. was saying that for now, they're boosting content that is filmed in the app just yeah. because they want people to utilize that. Mm -hmm. um just like you know using like popular music gets a small boost and um using different things like using the app for what it is yeah. like, it always gives you a small boost it might not be right. significant, but it, it it will give you like a small boost of some kind right I find it really hard to film in the app <laughs> like I've yeah, tried to film video and it's like hard to edit it too like I need I need to like take a course on that or something because I don't really know how to use it it's a learning curve for sure um you like previous to starting your TikTok too you had you were like mainly focused on Instagram too and you were making money off there as well yeah what like do you still do that on Instagram or are you solely TikTok now um what is I your what is like your preference okay I go on Instagram maybe once every three or four months at this point um, yeah I feel like I don't I ever see you on anymore I don't go on here anymore because the money has moved to TikTok. So okay. once you hit 10,000 followers on TikTok, you can join the creator fund. And once you join the creator fund, okay. you can start getting paid per video. 
And when you're in the creator fund, you can also join the creator marketplace, which is where brands reach out to you with money offers and say, Hey, make this content oh. for you 600 bucks. I didn't know they had that. On top of that, TikTok followers are basically free right now because yeah. it's so new that people are getting on there and following all kinds of people. People are very stingy with Instagram mm. followers. Like they're, they're like, do I want it? Right, do I right. It? But on TikTok, it's like free. So mm. I, when I joined TikTok in November, I had three followers. And then by the end of the week, I had like 2000. And j today I hit like 106,000, I think. Yeah, I saw that. Mm -hmm. So, and just based on like kind of the numbers, it's, it's getting a little bit harder to get followers, but it's still good. Like people who got on yeah. last year are at a million followers and people who are getting on right. now are getting a couple hundred thousand. Mm. So do you that's think why it's I like, switch. Do you think it's too late for people to start now? No, I do think the growth is going to slow down just because yeah. it's going to slow down as more people adopt the app, but there's still mm -hmm. so many people that are not on there yet that I think it's still like the wild, wild west. And like, mm -hmm. it's still really easy. Mm -hmm. like not all yeah. the niches are explored like instagram everything has been explored but like what you're right. doing hasn't really been explored on on tiktok so if you got on yeah you get on tiktok as well what you, you're doing is gonna blow up because yeah. no one's doing it and no one's done it the way you've done it you've already like proven to be the best at it mm -hmm. so if you move that over then you have both your platforms and your money mm -hmm. from both. yeah i read like an article too that tiktok is starting to have a lot of like in more informational like how-to videos and they're trying to promote that as well so like people are try are like moving over to tiktok to get that short form content of like yeah. tips and tricks and advice and things like that so it's like a good like marketplace for that yeah for sure i feel like the mantra code would be like explosive on tiktok because people would be all over that i'm trying i don't know exactly like what format like i should be doing like for my videos you know i'm like still I've trying to figure it out I don't know. The, you know, actually how I figured out that I couldn't bring the same content to TikTok was because I was following Nikita Dragon and she uh -huh. was posting all the same stuff and she was getting blasted in her comments. Like, you don't really? post the same stuff on TikTok that you do on Instagram or this isn't Instagram or be uh, more so real like people know, huh? Pretty. Yeah. And they were like, Instagram is for pretty people. TikTok isn't. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> so I like saw it happening to someone else and that's yeah. how I knew to stay away from that yeah um so I kind of took up used Nikita as like a let me just like what not to do <laughs> yeah as what not to do yeah and uh, it definitely feels like the more raw stuff goes a little further on TikTok yeah that's what I noticed yeah. My brother just commented and said dance lol. I know. He said you should sing earlier. Too. Yeah, I, like, I I don't have that talent. I can't do sing, it. Sing, really? <laughs> I am too awkward to do that. <laughs> so no, so no. <laughs> Maybe we could do a TikTok dance together. Uh -uh. I posted a dancing TikTok today. Uh -uh. You did? Oh my god, I haven't seen it yet. I'm like barely dancing. I'll have to check it out. <laughs> barely, barely. Um, uh, I have a question. So uh, what do you think like the key factor other than like your content um, was for you going viral on TikTok? Uh, timing. I think timing was a big one because I didn't post on TikTok for a long time because I thought like, oh, I can't sing. I can't dance. I can't do yeah. this. And then I was just like, there's this guy that I follow on there. He's He's called the layman investor. And he's literally just this guy that talks about money. And I was like, this old man is talking about money mm -hmm. and he has 270,000 followers. Like, why can't I do that? Mm -hmm. So then yeah. I started just doing that. And he was the only one I saw doing that. I didn't see business, TikTok, nothing. I just saw what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's interesting. So uh -huh. I started talking about business. And a long time ago, you and I had a conversation where I told you, like, I wanted to, like, teach people, like, financial literacy. Yes. And like, yeah. it seems like it, it didn't go that direction. But in that conversation, you told me like, that you you thought people would respond to like my kind of raw style yeah. of talking. And I've always mm -hmm. been very nervous to share that because I have a lisp. And because I, you know, I used to get teased a lot for my deep voice. And mm -hmm. um, so I didn't do anything. But then when I finally started like letting that out on TikTok, not only did people not bully me the way they did on Instagram, they mm -hmm. embraced it. They responded to it. They were like, it's nice to see somebody that's just acting 
normal like real right real yeah. so I think it was a combination of timing and just like embracing myself in a way that's like you know what mm. I gotta just fucking do this like I can't yeah. be hiding in a clamshell forever so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah I also like agree on that timing too because you started your TikTok around it was in 2020 right I started in November last year November yeah, so, November. yeah. so it's like in like during the pandemic too a lot of people during this time definitely like our starting businesses are in that like beginning stage too and they're kind of looking for that type of content as well so I feel like your page and your content definitely helps out all those people that are trying to get to where you are today you know I, I oh my god I got a message from a girl today and she said she's been following me on TikTok since November and she quit her oh. job and she said my tips helped her quit her job she left her full-time job and now she's in her business full-time Oh my god! I was like, what? that's amazing. What? I was that's like, oh, that's so like fulfilling to like hear that you've like helped someone. It was like, Sylvie. Get from like there She's to there. Right oh, she here? Oh my <laughs> yeah. gosh! Hi, Sylvie. Shout out to you, girl. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's amazing. I love getting like those DMs from people. They when they just say like, you know, your page has helped me so much. Like. Yeah. I've been going through this, this, and this, but, like, you know, I go to your page for, like, daily motivation, things like that, and, like, that just, like, that literally, like, makes my day and ma makes it all, like, worthwhile, because, like, do you get that's all I really want to do. Like, I, I mean, you have a million that. followers. I'm sure it's yeah. nonstop for you. Yeah, but I actually do make an effort to open all of the DMs. Like, it was Ooh. crazy. Yeah, like, during, when I was going, during that week when I went viral, like, I was getting a bunch of, like, reposts and, and DMs and whatever, and, I sat there like all night and I was opening them and I responded oh to them at, like all of them because I was like I don't because I don't like having like the you know the unread messages like the numbers or whatever <laughs> like I don't like seeing that so I have to like open all of them and get it to like a more reasonable number so I would like and even Juhai helped me too she was I was like hey can you help me like respond to all these people like it's getting really overwhelming <laughs> blah blah but like I feel like because I did that from the beginning too I created that connection yeah and, like the relationship and I set the tone with my followers like from the beginning so that when I did like um you know get bigger and grow my following they were like kind of there from the beginning and they like had that connection you That's know really smart I I I I do respond to comments but I cannot yeah there's too many dms like I can't do yeah. it does tiktok have dms too yeah where you can message okay yeah but they just there's too many because yeah. on TikTok, I notice a lot of people will be very engaged with your content and love you, mm -hmm. but they won't necessarily follow you because they don't need to because you constantly pop up in there for you. Oh, interesting. So um, because of that, a lot of people will DM you and like reach out to you and it just the numbers are massive because uh... it's it just, you know, you're showing up like the, the kind of unique thing about TikTok too is that your content is being served more to people who don't follow you than to, who do follow you. Like with Instagram, mm -hmm. you're getting served to like between one and 10% of your following um, mm -hmm. more if, if you know, it's a great, great, great day with right. TikTok, you're being served to the people who engage with your style and your type of content. So that can mm -hmm. be your followers and hopefully it is, but it is also mm -hmm. pushed out to people who don't follow you yet. It's, it's a very mm -hmm. like unique type of AI. So it seems like for TikTok too, there's probably a better like or faster chance to grow on there than Instagram. Yes. Yeah. Like that's the way that that works. That's what it kind of yeah. sounds like. Yeah, for sure. Very interesting. And there's a guy um, who does the calculations on the number. So he started TikTok in like 2018, and he has like 3.2 million followers. And mm -hmm. he does the calculations. He's been tracking it for the past couple of years. And so he was saying in 2018, you would grow at this certain rate. And then as the years go on, there's a decline. So his, mm -hmm. in his calculations on his sheet, if you join this year compared to last year, it's about like, a, it's 12 times harder now to grow than it was this time last year. And last he predicts year. in the next three months, it's going to be three times harder than the next six months. It's going to be something like 10 times harder. Next year, this time, it's going to be like, he has it all broken down by percentages, but as more people adopt the platform, the harder it's going to mm. get to get bigger because it's going to turn into like the same Instagram style stuff where people already know who they want to follow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, another question about TikTok too, like, do you, your brother says see... him and the boys went slightly viral. 
Oh, what video? <laughs> Lucas, let us know in the comments. <laughs> we want to know. <laughs> what did you do? Did you dance? Did you sing? <laughs> do your dancey dance we need to know i know i want to know um my question was so like i've been seeing a lot of like the people that are going viral on tiktok they're they're kind of turning into like an influencer role um but from my perspective i'm coming as like a brand like as a brand you know so what do you like what advice what tips do you have like for me coming on to tiktok as a brand as opposed think, to just like an individual. Do you go on TikTok a lot? Like how much time do you spend on there? Not a lot. Not a lot. So like, no. first of all, I would say go on there and like get into the culture because it's so different. So mm -hmm. if you try posting stuff that isn't really like TikTok culture, it's it's just not gonna, no one's gonna like vibe with it. So mm -hmm. um, like, get into it and like learn like what people are talking about and how people are talking and what kind of content and like figure out what you like on TikTok and then yeah like but first of all I would say like you have to spend time on there like a significant amount of time just to learn how it works okay but, yeah good tip. It's, um, it's pretty easy I mean you know how to go viral you've done it before obviously yeah you just I have know, to do I, it now on TikTok. Now on another platform. Right. It's like another thing to like make content on. It's kind of overwhelming, but I feel like it's it's worth it because of definitely the monetization too. Like that is insane. I didn't know that they had all of those like features. On yeah, with TikTok, it's so easy to make money because first of all, TikTok pays you through the creator yeah. fund. It's not a lot of money, but if you mm -hmm. get to like, if you get Montreco to a million followers on TikTok and then everything that you post gets, you know, like half a million views, that would be crazy money. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah. So it, it's not like insane money, but if you like build up your following, it is. And then the yeah. marketplace of people reaching out to you, that's mm -hmm. where the real money comes in. And then people reach out to you for like collaborations through your emails and through your DMs. Mm -hmm. And then you'd be having your merch on there. Like it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, did you see that on Instagram, they're going to try, they're testing out right now, but they want to monetize IGTV videos. How? I think for views. So kind of like, uh, they want to add uh, ads on there. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think they're rolling out the testing phase right now to see like how it is, but that is like their, kind of like their goal. Interesting. Right? How do you feel about Instagram right now? Like, are you still explosively growing or like, how do you feel about like, um, just the competition with there's like Instagram, and there's TikTok, like what right. are your thoughts? Um, I mean, so after the explosive growth from when I hit a million, it definitely have has been growing consistently, but not like as crazy numbers as it did before, like when I went viral. Um, because I think I'm right now at like a million, like sixty thousand, I think. Oh, okay. Um, which Build is still like a lot. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it's a lot of people. Um, <laughs> but. Yeah, like, I mean, I feel overwhelmed with the all the amount of, like, social media platforms, like, to create content on, because Instagram itself takes a lot of work. Like, yeah. I pretty, I post, um, on average, four times a day on the feed, which is okay. a lot. And that's a mixture of lifestyle photos, um, trying to push my merch, as well as, like, all of my quote and inspiration things. Um, and then I also, I mean, I do have accounts. I have, like, a, I have a YouTube account my personal one and my mantra one. And then I also have the TikTok as well. Um, and also Pinterest too. I'm on there as well. So it's like oh, a lot. Yeah. yeah. Pinterest too is a, I feel like it's a really big platform that can help um, get exposure as well. Cause you can oh, tag yeah. and like link everything. Cause you um, grew my Pinterest to 1.2 million. Yes. It's yeah. currently at 2.2 million. Yeah. Like, like you Pinterest grew it the like first million. Thing. So you've yeah. done a million twice. Yeah, so I just TikTok need to do it again. Like no sweat for you. Yeah, I hope so. Oh, my sister. Oh, my sister's on here. Hi. She said preview the new merch. Oh, I'm wearing, I'm, I'm launching this merch. probably next week, I think. I just shot it today. Can Cute. Libra. I'll have to give you one for Aries. Ah, I wear Tyler's that an Aries. fucking Aries sweater in like most of my TikToks. Oh my god, I saw. <laughs> I love it. It's so comfortable. I, I feel like know. everyone that it, like everyone that has it, they always tell me they're like, I always wear it every day because it's so comfy. I wear it all the time. It's like the perfect like lounge like outfit. Yeah. 
And people always but ask I'm, for it, and I'm like, <laughs> but I'm launching this with um matching bike shorts. <gasps> yeah, oh my really God. in this color, and then also um like a light tan color. I need. Yes, I will give it to you the next I'm time I see you. Obsessed. Thank you. Keep a lookout. It'll be launching next week. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, so with monetization too, what challenges do you face on Instagram versus TikTok for monetizing your, your content? I have the same problem on both platforms and that's people require kind of inauthenticity. So I won't re accept any collaboration that I don't feel like true and authentic to. Mm -hmm. But brands very often try to force something in there that doesn't make sense. Um, so it doesn't matter how good the offer is. Like, it looks like, wow, $1,000, amazing. And then I start looking at it, and I'm like, well, I'm going to have to pass on this because you want me to do something stupid. Yeah. Or, you know, like, like in my opinion, the content that I make, it, it does what it does because I do it in a certain way. And if I have to follow someone else's rules, it's not going to work. Mm. And I feel like you probably feel the same way with mantra. You went viral yeah. because you're doing what you're doing in the Julia way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, my, that's my biggest problem with monetizing is just that a lot of brand partners don't understand that it has to be authentic and it has to look real. Like I'm not going to get on there and be like, buy this thing. I love it. Yeah. You know, like it, it's yeah. just, so um, that's probably one of the biggest problems I have with that. I mean, I, I turn mm -hmm. down brand opportunities all the time because they want something that's so dumb. Mm. Or yeah, I get a lot of, um, I get a lot of like DMs too, about like, hey, like, what are your promo rates? I'd love to like, you know, uh, promote my product or whatever, right? And I go to their page and their page is like literally nothing. Like oh. there's no like, yeah, like it'll either have nothing on there. So I think it's just like a spam or it's like a brand that's like not really built out yet. And I'm just like, what am I going to promote? Like I need to have, like, I don't like, like all those. It? Yeah. Like what, what exactly am I promoting? Like, I don't know. Maybe it's just spam. I just get a lot of spam messages. Well, that's scary too, because you don't know what you're like, they want you to be associated with. You're like, oh. I know. I always just say like, oh, like, sorry, no, I just decline it or I delete it. I just, <laughs> I didn't see it. So I... <laughs> But yeah, um, on on Instagram, I feel like the way to monetize these days are through like affiliate links too. Like, I don't know if you did that when you were promoting on Instagram too, but I feel like that is like the way that the brands are moving towards um, rather than like a sponsored post. Yeah. You know what? A model that I've been seeing a lot on TikTok too is a uh, penny per view. Oh, I don't know who that is. So um, people who have accounts where they, their their videos go consistently like viral or semi-viral, like let's say mm -hmm. like they hit the like consistently 20,000s, 30,000s, 40,000s, a lot of them offer the option of penny per view. So you, they'll say like $1,000 oh. for, for a video or uh -huh. you can pay me a penny per view. And oh, I see, I see. It's crazy because, you know, if that video flops, the advertiser is going to pay them almost nothing. But if that right. video hits 2 million views, you're going to be paying them 20, 30, 40 grand. Mm. Oh, interesting. Interesting, right? Like there's a whole yeah. new monetization takeover happening on TikTok that hasn't been explored quite yeah. this way on Instagram. There's so much money in TikTok right now. Do you think that they're going to add like ads on TikTok? Or there, I there are TikTok ads, ads, right? Yeah. Yeah. There are TikTok ads right now. But it's pretty subtle, though. Very like, subtle. When I see it, yeah, it's almost like it, it just looks like it's another video that's, like, on my feed. But then yeah. I realize it's, like, an ad at, at the top. The funny thing is I ended up in, like, a TikTok conversation the other day where I wasn't talking. I was, like, observing it. And people uh, were talking about how they've never seen a TikTok ad. But there are oh, really? a lot of TikTok ads. They are yeah. laced in so well that you very often don't know it's right. an ad. Maybe like it's because, like, people no are just, like, swiping. They're just, like, they, they just don't notice it, you know? Oh, also, TikTok has Probably. a really high rate of people purchasing through ads. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. And if you start a, uh, if you get a TikTok advertiser account, they'll uh -huh. match your ad spend up to $2,300. So if you got an ad Oh, yes, TikTok, you told me that. Yeah, yeah. Free money. Okay, so for Brillies, have you run ads on TikTok? I have. And how did that do? 
really well. Um, I did brand awareness campaigns and they were mm -hmm. really cheap, like pennies. So there wasn't a lot of conversions off of them, but I also wasn't optimizing the ads for conversion. I was doing it mm -hmm. for brand awareness and I was super happy with the results. Mm, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. But you can I optimize actually... for conversions or brand awareness or whatever other different yeah. How is like the back end? Is it like similar to Facebook? So ads? complicated, so oh, stupid. Really? Like playing mm. with rocks. It's like a rock yeah. and stick. You have to figure it out all on your own. Makes no sense. Because I remember like the ads was they were only for agencies before and then now they opened up to kind of just creators in general, right? Yeah. And if your ad if you post something that gets some like two hundred thousand views, you can then turn that into an ad too. Like it's getting better. It's getting pretty oh. good. Okay. Yeah, like I personally have not run any ads on my page. Not like yet. At all. Yeah. Eventually. Later. I haven't got I haven't gone there yet. I just feel like because my audience like engages well enough, like I do get like enough like engagement and stuff like that and like um, my posts do drive sales. So I just like haven't really dipped into that yet. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean that's I definitely great. want to for sure. I mean, if you don't um, need to, save that coin. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, once I get, if I get to that point where I need to, then I will. And I'll definitely be asking for your help, too, your guidance. I feel <laughs> like, why are you asking me all the questions? You're the one that has a million fucking followers. Uh, yeah, but you were like the business guru. Oh, my a God. Million. You're the yeah. one I need to be, like, grilling about Instagram. Because, <laughs> damn. 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 For those of you that don't know, too, Kyla and I used to work together. I used to work for Brillies. Oh, yeah. Basically, anything in Brillies that has a shred of, like, decency, like, things that look pretty, like this. Oh, yeah, um, I designed that. <laughs> anything that looks decent in this place was done by Julia. I don't do anything cute or creative <laughs> at all. Um, yeah. Left to my own devices, this is what happens. Oh, my gosh. Is that new product? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I tell people the other side of all yours. the time yeah. that Brillies wouldn't have gotten this far if I hadn't had you on board in the first time or in the first place. And they're yeah. always like, "Oh, how did you decide how to hire her?" And I was like, "Actually, she convinced me yeah. that I needed to hire her. Like, I didn't. She I remember like, that. Do this for you. I know because yeah. I remember when I met you, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I could do this." And I yeah. had so many ideas, and I was like, "Please, just let me like try it out. Let me just do this." Yeah, but it wouldn't have gotten this far if I hadn't had you for, like, that, I guess it was, like, two years almost, right? Yeah, like two year years, yeah. yeah. Um, I think it was, like, two years. Because, you know, there was no, like, creative anything behind it until you started doing that. So it would have just mm -hmm. probably always been a small little hobby thing. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like us working as a team, too, it definitely, like, worked out because I had, like, the creative, like, side and then you had like the very like business minded side like the numbers and the strategies and things like that yeah it's been impossible and it worked out you. I still haven't have not found anybody that I'm satisfied with oh really <laughs> oh, oh my gosh I'm so sorry that I had to You're stop irreplaceable, Julia. You don't understand. I know Nobody I felt so bad right. when I like had to tell you I was like uh it's gonna be sad but look what you're doing now it's so amazing I know oh my gosh I have to show you my next product that's coming out in like two months ish did i tell you i'm working on a planner yes yes that is coming out it's in production right now i'm so excited oh my to God. show you it's like so so good like you are that's, gonna love it that's so exciting I, I don't have the sample with me right now because um i actually gave it to juhei to test out but it's nice. so good nice i'm so excited so, my schmo cases finally got here only um oh really well, Four months late. Can we see it? Yeah, you can see it. I'll show you. Ugh. Let me get off my butt. Let me kick so everything over. Just kidding. You can't see it. But you can see the glasses. Okay. Yeah, show us. Um, the glasses are, they turned out super cute, and there's a couple on their way to Sports Illustrated right now. Ooh. Look how cute these turned out. Oh, those look good. And it says, like, schmo on the front, right? It says schmo uh, in this metal piece, and then it says mm -hmm. schmo, like, with the signature on the inside here. Oh, I guess sick. you probably can't really see that. But, yeah, they turned out yeah. so good. Like, Oh, nice. 
Yeah. Do you see a correlation between going viral for your business tips to really like your business? Uh, no, not really. Honestly, I didn't even talk about Brillies at all for the first part of starting of my yeah. TikTok stuff, just because mm -hmm. it wasn't really like, um, I, it didn't feel super relevant and I didn't want to come off like try hardy. So I just right. didn't talk about the sunglasses at all. Mm -hmm. And then later people started asking to see it. So like the amazing thing about TikTok is people will tell you what they want. Like mm -hmm. you go through your comments and people will say, I want to see this. I want to see that. Talk about this. Like people will tell you and guide you. It makes making content so easy because mm -hmm. they'll tell you what they want. So they said, mm -hmm. you know, like, I want to see this. I want to see that. Talk about the business. I want to see packing and shipping. I want to see fulfillment. Mm -hmm. So like, I literally started making content for the community. And the more I do that, the better it gets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed too, that like you seamlessly integrated like Brillies into your videos. Like I noticed because like, you don't promote you're not like, this is my business. And this is what I, I do. Know. Like, you kind of just say like, this is like the tips to do it. And like, this is how I did it. And then you like seamlessly like, Put it in your videos and that's what I love yeah where it's not like, too much in your face that, like advertising it was it was intentional doing that because I yeah my success wasn't based on the business and I didn't want to like go in hard like okay now that I have your attention here's sunglasses because right. nobody's following right. sunglasses so mm -hmm. instead of talking about it I wanted to like use it as proof of mm. um success rather like prove using it to prove that I've done it before rather than just being like okay buy this mm-hmm mm-hmm so, Someone asked a question. How can you get people, brands, to use your products in photo shoots? Oh. Good question. You, you can want to go that. first. Oh, you can I go can... first. Okay. So what I do is I loan out to any stylist, any photographer, any magazine, any publication that has a proven track record of using items in photo shoots and has like a, you know, they're, they are actually out shooting the content. So mm -hmm. I'm not greedy or stingy with the product at all. If there's a chance that it might get used in a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. I know that that can take a lot of resources. Not everybody can like completely afford to do that. So that's why you loan it. Like you let them use it and then you get it back. Mm -hmm. um, so at almost all of the publications that I've been in like Vogue and this month was Glamour and um, Harper's Bazaar, all of those mm -hmm. came from just simply like being generous with the product and loaning them out, like making it available for the stylist. So being mm -hmm. in Wonder Woman 1984, being in Klarna, those mm -hmm. also were loaned. I didn't pay for that. I literally just gave the stylist the pieces and she used them in the movies. So mm -hmm. I would say just be generous, make connections with stylists, photographers, models, and let them pick things, give it to them. Yeah. That's, That's how I do advice. it. Yeah. For me personally, for Mantra, I actually don't um, do any like influencer um, collaborations as of right now. Because um, you are the influencer. Million yeah, followers. it's like so interesting too, because like my Julia sub part is like, that's like kind of being like a content creator, influencer style, whatever. But then I also have like me as the Mantra Co and that's like the brand part. So it's like interesting to see like, like play both roles, you know. But yeah. for like, for me, um, yeah, I would definitely say, like, reach out to a lot of people, like, just email the people, DM the people that you want, um, you know, to wear your product, like, offer them to gift them an item in exchange for a post or things like that. It's just definitely, like, doing, like, the outreach. Um, because even for Montreco, like, as a brand side, I also, um, you know, promote a lot of products on my page as well, like, from brands. And I even do a lot of the outreach, too. Like, if there's a brand that I really like that I want to work with, um, you know, I'll shoot them an email and be like, hey, like, I would love to, like, do a collaboration with you or partner with you in something. And then I, like, share all my ideas and then kind of go from there. I love that our conversations are so completely polar opposites. Yeah. To the same effect. And I feel like these are such important conversations to have because there are so many people that are trying to figure out how to start a business and they think mm -hmm. they have to do it a certain way. Yeah. And when we share that it is possible to be a creative person like you, it's possible to be an analytical person like me, it's possible mm -hmm. to do it your way, it's possible to do it. I feel like this is such important stuff that we can yeah. actually show people that you don't have to do it this one certain way. Like, yeah, it's crazy to me and I like live for it. Yeah. And I love the fact too, that like we both have experienced like all the different roles from being like in front of the camera, behind the camera, like being a business owner, being a consumer, you know, like we literally have seen it all so that we get like, 
we get to have like a really like interesting perspective like you know yeah. on everything mm-hmm. like it's my favorite thing it's literally amazing what um new projects do you have coming up uh share? so i've I'm still trying to develop that software with Jaden. Oh, it's yeah. just taking a lot more like resources than either one of us planned. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm building out a, the, I, I'm taking less of a active role in Brillies. I'm moving everything to a fulfillment center and I, mm. um, I'm going to mo- focus more on the, the, what am I trying to say? the conversion audit side of things yeah the digital side like i really want to have an up and running functional digital business by the end of mm-hmm. this year but mm-hmm. to do that i have to take less time here at brillies so i'm yeah. taking less of an active role in brillies and moving a little more digital mm-hmm. yeah what that's interesting you? too i want to talk about that as well it's like managing both your personal you know accounts your social accounts um as well as like your multiple businesses because like you have multiple businesses you have Brillies, and then you also have your digital um, information and like coaching and things like that. Um, how do you balance all of that? I don't. That's... <laughs> I simply do not. You're the queen of. I knew. I actually knew I you were going to say that. <laughs> the, the, I'm like big crackhead energy. So like, yeah, you know how to balance. I don't. <laughs> I would love to hear how you balance because you have a million things going on at all times. I know. Oh my gosh. Do you remember when I work with you? I like set you up on like a sauna and I was like, okay, these are your tasks. And I like assigned everything to you. Yeah. So I was like trying to get organized. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a huge like person on lists and like organization. Like I have a plan for everything. I like write everything down. I am like very like stickler for a schedule. That's, That's good sure. though. That's my tip. Yeah. But like, how do you balance like mantra and projects and life and eating healthy? Because you have a lot of things that you're like about, like, you're really yeah. about like wellness and like emotional health and yeah. creating content and managing mm-hmm. the community. And, 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 and. So how do you balance all those many things? I think it's time management for sure. Like I block out like certain times where I'm like, you know, I have to from like this hour to this hour, I need to focus on this one project and then I'll like move on, you know, and like time block. That's good. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a lot. Like it's a lot of content, a lot of like emails, a lot of just everything to manage, but I'm just trying to find a balance. I feel like I haven't really found that balance yet because I am still working like, you know, through the night and things like that. Um, because as like a small business owner, you don't really have, you don't have a cutoff time, you know? Right. Like, like what I know, I'm sure you can agree. Yeah. Like you just work when work happens, like you just do it, you know? Yeah, for sure. But I am trying to find like that, you know, boundary, I would say. I, I think I need some boundaries in that where I, cause I'm like, oh, I'm always work, 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 but I need to do more of like a work life balance thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll be interested to see how that works for you. When I figure it out, I will let you know because I know That'll you need some balance in your life. I I just have zero balance at all. Like I yeah, I go like a thousand percent, but then I also tend to burn out for like a good week and then I yeah. like come back after that. Ooh, we should go into some like self-care things. Um, so when you do burn out, what do you do? that like helps you reset I think you should tell me what to do because I think you know that I just <laughs> run into the ground <laughs> <laughs> well first you should follow Montreco and see what tips are on there <laughs> yes, do that. that's the advice that I have for you I literally watch all of your self-care and wellness things and I'm like yes I'm gonna do this you just need to do it you need to make I a commitment know. to do it do I get points for it makes me feel good like I'm gonna do it yeah do I, I mean that's good that's that's the first step you know just being made aware <laughs> of the things I you need love, to do like I'm obsessed with all of the stuff you post about like eating mindfully and taking Thank care of your body you. and, like all of that like even though I'm not actively participating in any of it it like soothes yeah. me like it makes me like I love to see it because it's just Aww. like a soothing thing to see you know like yeah so mantra is part of my self-care like in that way oh, yes that makes me happy I think it does that for a lot of people yeah 
for sure. Yeah. It's like it is definitely overwhelming though to like because once I did go viral, it's like I'm like, oh my gosh, I have like a lot of people to serve and like a lot of like you know people with problems that are coming to me, and it was really important for me to like focus on self care too, so that I could like be the best version so I that I can serve my community. Because once you go viral, you have, like, so many people to cater to, you know? Like, so many opinions, yeah. so many requests, things like that. It does get really overwhelming. So, it's, like, super so important. So, how, how do you stay true to serving your community and staying true to Julia in all this? Because Mantraco started because it's your thing. Like, it's your baby. Mm -hmm. So, how do you serve yourself and make sure you're keep doing what you want and also serving the community? Because they're going to have demands. And, yeah, you know, a big sure. part of success is keeping your community happy how do you balance the two things I think like having a good support system definitely helps a lot um I feel like you know having like Russell and like my family they always remind me and like they keep me grounded too and they like make sure that I'm like taking care of myself first before everyone else and I so think that's like really important to have when you structure your content are you thinking like this is something that makes me happy or are you thinking this is something the community will respond to? Like, how do you go about that? I think a little bit of both. I try to do, you know, I try to create content that is authentic to me. And I think that's usually what, um, you know, resonates with other people too. Like that's what people can relate to when it is really authentic. Um, but I mean, from a business perspective, when I know that some type of content does better than others, I do try to do you know, make more of that type of content, yeah. you know? Um, but at the same time, I just create content that feels well in my heart. And I think that's kind of the key element that made my page go viral because everything was really true to my heart and it was really authentic. Have you ever had the experience of posting something that you kind of knew wasn't super true to you or wasn't super fitting and you posted it anyway because you had to post something and then it didn't respond well because this is something I see happen or I hear about a lot not really it hasn't happened a lot because I feel like I only want to post things that I be believe about because okay. I don't like I don't like to upset people and I don't like to have like any backlash um yeah. but I would say one thing that just came to mind was um I posted like a picture of essential water bottles and I got like really mean comment from like this one girl and it was literally just one comment and I like felt so like upset about it for like the next yeah. like, two days because I was like you know she was talking about sustainability and things like that and like I'm a huge advocate for sustainability and I love to you know do whatever I can to like eliminate plastic and things like that but it was like kind of a sponsored post too at the same time and I had to post it but intentionally I didn't know that it was going to give like that type of reaction um but at the end of the day you can't please everyone you know that's what I'm still learning um but it was you know only one person so I guess do you me. deal with a lot of bullying on I mean with having a million followers you would think that something negative might come out of that do you deal with any bullying bullying or no because so honestly positive. no yeah it's actually really positive like I think I've created a good safe space for people to come to that they just know like this is a positive page, you know, it's like, because okay. anytime if there is any like negative comments or hate comments or whatever, I would just block it, delete it, or I don't even see it, you know, like, That's so That's like, good. I don't accept that at all on my page. And I'm really grateful because I actually don't get a lot of, you know, rude DMs and things like that. Um, so yeah, I'm really grateful for that. I get a, a lot of bullying on TikTok. I know, I know you do. Yeah. Lot. Like what, what are they like, what are they saying? Are they just going against the things that you're saying or? Um, I mean, very often it's stuff about, um, people not liking my list. So like for, let me like reset that for a second. 99% of the people on TikTok don't care about my list. They're fine mm. with it. But there are the percentage that talk about it and they're really mean about it. There's really? also people that talk, I use my hands a lot to talk. Like we know this. Yeah. I'm like a crab. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people talk, bully me over that. There's a lot of, um nasty nasty comments because I'm mixed and a lot of people on TikTok belong in holes in the ground and see a problem mm -hmm. with mixed people so there's a lot of stuff around that mm -hmm. and um there's a lot of stuff around being a woman in business like there's these mm. these several things that people have opinions about yeah. and on Instagram the bullying was more like you're promoting obesity because I was always talking about body positivity on here 
-hmm. now it's moved into like all different aspects of my life like bullying on all types of fronts so it's it it bothered me at first but now I'm like you know what like I follow Gary V. I am obsessed with oh, Gary V. I love and he, him. Yeah. He's amazing. Mm-hmm. And he posted something saying that if somebody is going out of their way to make that kind of negativity on your page, that's a reflection of what they're experiencing inside. Oh, yeah. 100%. Of them. Mm-hmm. Right. So, like, and then I was thinking about it. I was like, I've never in my life commented something like that. Never. No. Yeah. You have to be hurt to, like, do that. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, because they're just pro- projecting, like, their own insecurities and their own anger, like, out on you. Right. So, um, yeah, so that's how I'm, I'm learning to deal with it. But, you know, yeah. I don't know if you might not have that same experience because your whole community might come over from Instagram to TikTok and it might just be, mm-hmm. like, warm and embracing. And I, I hope that's what happens. That would be amazing. Yeah, me too. Well, yeah. we are almost at the hour mark. That hour went by Oh, so my fast. God. Yeah, can you believe it? It was so fast. It was so fast. I don't know. I actually don't know if it's going to time out or not. But I in case it, it does. Um, thank you so much for coming on this live. Thank you. I feel like I just rambled the whole time and I should have been asking no. you questions about going no, getting no, no. famous. I feel like I learned so much from you already just from this like hour <laughs> talk. Like oh I am definitely motivated to like start making more content on TikTok for sure. I mean, like, I love Instagram. Like, Instagram is, like, my, like, you know, number one, of course. But TikTok, I want to grow, like, you know, and expand. Just do on TikTok what you did on Mantra and then millions of dollars. That's my opinion. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Women empowerment right here. Yeah. Thank Thank you so much. I miss you. you. I know I miss you. We need to hang out. I know. Oh, no. um, but share with everyone where they can find you at on TikTok and also about Brillies too. Um, for me, you can find me with the same name on everything. So on TikTok, I'm Kyla Yuli, and then Brillies is Brillies.co. And um, but more importantly, the, the Mantra Co. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you guys can follow that. me at the Mantra Co. <laughs> I always try to deflect and put more uh, pressure on on you <laughs> or really but like i think um you know mantra co like i feel like mantra co is like what people are like here to see like it's, it's a, yeah it's like a massive following i know like, i need to like people get better it. at that because like i don't really like a lot of like too much attention on myself and like i <gasps> like when i talk about myself too much i feel like oh my gosh like am i like sounding like conceited or something but i need to get yeah. more comfortable in like talking about it because i feel like I, ha- I do have a lot of like tips and like information to share um like through my experiences and like I love to like help other people and like support all my friends that are doing like you know big things and starting their own businesses I see Niwa on here oh my gosh hi girl she has the cutest um home decor brand like she sells these pedestals and like all these like busts oh my god it's so cute I have to send it to you you would love it you should actually use it for a photo shoot I will connect you guys yes yeah yeah. Okay. Well, there's a minute left. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you thank guys you enjoyed everybody. our live. Um, if you guys have any questions, send us um, a DM, follow us. We can like have a conversation. Um, and if you guys want to see more, um, let us know. I feel like we should do another live, like a part two. <gasps> yes. Do you, would you be down? So down. Okay. Let's do it. Let's we'll do, do it. it. Okay, well, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, guys. Bye.